Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Brain Talks, the channel where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, psychotherapy, neuropsychology and neurosciences every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who's been working as a therapist, researcher and invited lecturer for the past few years. Here I discuss and describe different topics, approaches and research findings regarding psychology and neurosciences the best as I can for you to understand it and for you to learn something about it. All videos here are just for educational purposes and it's not intended to diagnose any psychiatric condition or neurological disorder. Now, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. So, today's theme is focused on psychology. What is psychology? What does it study? How can it be applied in daily life? These are some questions I will try to answer with this video and I hope it will be very useful to you. This video will be divided into two different ones. When I started to edit it, I saw that it has already two minutes long, so I think it was better to divide it into two separate videos. The first video, it will be more focused on the classical approach to psychology. We will look to William James, Wundt, Freud and other perspectives that were a fundamental basis to the development of the scientific psychology. The second part, it will be more focused on the contemporary psychology, such as cognitive approach and cognitive development. So, according to APA, American Psychological Association, psychology is the scientific study of mental processes, the mind and behavior. Despite its complexity, psychology is a very recent science, with most advances happening in the past 150 years. However, its origins may be traced to ancient Greece about 400 and 500 BC. In that time, the emphasis was on the philosophical questions, with thinkers such as Socrates, Plato and Aristotle. Curiously, philosophers used to discuss in that time many topics now studied by modern psychology, such as memory, free will, nature or attraction. Now I will describe the journey that psychology has done through the years from a subfield of uh, philosophy to a scientific field on its own. So, psychology was a subfield of philosophy till the 19th century. However, William Wundt established the first psychological laboratory in Leipzig in uh, 1879. He was a pioneer and attracted a large number of students from different parts of the world who started expanding the discipline. Gradually, the study of psychology was organized around certain schools of thought. The main schools of thought were Structuralism, Functionalism, Behaviorism, Psychoanalytic Theory, Gestalt and Cognitive Approach. However, let's go back a little bit. In the early days of psychology, there were two dominant theoretical perspectives regarding how the world worked, such as Structuralism and Functionalism. Structuralism was the name given to the approach pioneered by William Wundt, which focused on breaking down mental processes into the most basic component. The term originated from Edward Titchener, an American psychology who had been trained by Wundt. Wundt was important because he separated psychology from philosophy by analyzing the workings of the mind in a more structured way, with the emphasis being on objective measurement and control. Structuralism relied on training introspection, a research method whereby subjects report what was going on in their minds while performing a certain task. However, introspection proved to be an unreliable method because there was too much individual variation on research subjects. Different subjects report different experiences, therefore it was impossible to compare them because of their differences. Despite the failure of introspection, Wundt is an important figure in the story of psychology as he opened the first laboratory dedicated to psychology in 1879 and its opening is usually thought to be the beginning of the experimental psychology. 
Wundt was a very important person in the development of psychology. However, we can find other researchers that are as well as important as William Wundt. An American psychologist named William James developed an approach which came to be known as functionalism. William James argued that the mind is always changing and its point was to look for the structure of the conscious experience. Rather, he proposed that the focus should be on how and why an organism does something. For instance, what are the causes of behavior? Or what are the functions of that specific behavior? James suggested that psychology should look to the underlying cause of behavior and mental processes and his emphasis should be on the consequences and the causes of behavior. As you can see, here is the fundamentals of behaviorism. So, structuralism and functionalism have been replaced by several dominant influential approaches to psychology, each one underpinned by a shared set of assumptions of what people are like or what is important to study and how to study it. Freud believed that understanding the unconscious mind was critical to understand conscious behavior. This was especially true for individuals that he saw who suffered from various histories and neuroses. Freud relied on dream analysis, slips of tongue and free association. However, many psychologists were not satisfied by Freud's approach. Therefore, a movement called behaviorism starts to develop. Behaviorism focused on strategies that were uh, based on controlled laboratory experiments and rejection of the unseen of the unconscious forces as causes of behavior. Names as Pavlov, Watson, Skinner were the fathers of behaviorism. It was on this approach that the principles of learning were developed. Behaviorism is largely responsible for establishing psychology as a scientific discipline through its uh, methods of experimentation and empirical findings. Another important uh, psychological approach that was developed was Gestalt approach. Max Wertmeier was the main psychologist of this field. Gestalt psychologists focus on the whole instead of the sum of the parts. Wertheimer stated that the whole is often what the individual responds to its perception. Gestalt psychologists deals with the fact that although a sensory experience can be broken down into individual parts, but how those parts relate to each other as a whole is often what the individual responds to in perception. So, after behaviorism, Carl Rogers uh, coined an approach named humanistic psychology. He stated that the subjective experience and personal growth were key features to understand human development. According to the humanistic perspective, the subjective experiences and interpretations are important to determine the course of their actions. Theories must be useful not only for understanding people, but also for understanding one's own life and uh, one's own self-actualization. However, in the 60s, another uh, revolution starts to emerge. This revolution is called the Cognitive Revolution. Cognitive Revolution started in the 60s and adopted a scientific approach, a lay-based scientific approach to memory, perception, cognitive development, mental illness and much more. The cognitive perspective was focused on uh, mental processes such as memory, attention, decision making and which mental instances were responsible for cognitive processing. So, as you can see, psychology is a scientific discipline that studies human mind, human processes and uh, overt behavior and was very influential because of different theoretical approaches that were the main fundamentals of this scientific discipline. Psychology uses the scientific method to study memory, cognition, uh, behavior, personality, psychopathology and so forth. So, contemporary psychology has different branches and these branches will be targets of future videos. So please stay tuned if you want to know more about these uh, scientific branches of psychology. 
such as clinical psychology, psychotherapy, developmental psychology, psychopathology or cognitive neurosciences. Psychology became a scientific field because of the contributions of all of these theoretical approaches. And now, let's just summarize the contents of today. Wundt was a structuralist, which meant that he believed that our cognitive experience was best understood by breaking down experience into different parts. William James was the proponent of functionalism. His particular perspective focused on how mental activity served as adaptive responses to an organism environment. Like Wundt, James also relied on introspection. However, his research approach has incorporated more objective measures as well. Freud's psychoanalysis was the original psychodynamic theory, but psychodynamic approaches had different authors such as Jung, Adler and Erikson. Psychoanalytic theory remained a dominant force in clinical psychology for several decades. Gestalt psychology was very influential in Europe. Gestalt psychology takes an holistic view of an individual and his experiences. Uh, Wertmeyer, Koffer and Kohler immigrated uh, to the United States and they start their laboratory studies, uh, which were very important to this kind of approach. Some of the principles of gestalt psychology are still very influential in the study of sensation and perception. Behaviorism was focused on making psychology an objective science by study over behavior and emphasizing the importance of unobservable mental processes. John Watson is often considered the father of behaviorism and Skinner contributes to the understanding of principles of operant condition cannot be underestimated. The humanistic approach is focused on uh, self-actualization and on human principles. Maslow and Rogers were very influential in shaping humanistic psychology. So, in the 1960s, the cognitive revolution has changed psychology forever by focused on the cognitive processes underlying uh, information processing. Well, it's all for today. Don't forget to check the video description to see the references regarding today's theme. Before we go, I would like to know what you think about all of this. So, use the comment section below to express your mind. Also, if you find these contents useful, please leave a like and consider to subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. Welcome to Mind Brain Talks and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!